We're now going to do the proof of Green's theorem. Well, not every detail, but some of the main ideas. So some students groan every time I say the word proof, but I think this is a useful review of a bunch of concepts and how they fit together. So recall what we want to prove is that the integral over C of P dx plus Q dy is the double integral over, let's call it R, region R of um, dq dx minus dp dy dA, where C is a simple closed curve in the plane and R is the region bounded by C. Okay, now we'll prove this in several steps. The first step, step one, is we're going to consider the special case where R is a type one region and where Q is equal to zero. Okay, now recall that to be a type one region means that it looks like this. So X goes from A to B, and here we have the graph of Y equals G1 of X, and here we have the graph of Y equals G2 of X, and then here's the line where X equals A, and here's the line where x equals b. This is a region R. Now what's the boundary? Well, the boundary, we could think of it as having four pieces. So let's call this lower horizontal piece C1. And let's call this right vertical piece C2. And let's call this um, upper horizontal piece C3. Now we have to be careful that we now orient this going to the left. So that's what positive orientation means here. And C2 will be the left edge, which we now have to orient. Sorry, C4 is the left edge, which we now have to orient going down. Okay, so the integral over C of P dx is the integral over C1 of P dx plus the integral over C2 of P dx plus the integral over C3 of P dx plus the integral over C4 of P dx. Okay, so how do we evaluate these integrals? So to do the integral over C1 of P dx, well, I need a parameterization of C1. So a parameterization of C1 the obvious parameterization to use is where x is equal to t and y equals g1 of x and t goes from a to b. Okay, And then the integral over C1 of p dx is um, the integral as t goes from a to b of p evaluated at the point t comma um, g1 of t. Then I have to multiply by x prime of t, which is 1 dt. Okay, um, and we might as well we might as well uh, call this tx, so we could just rewrite this as the integral from a to b of p of x g1 of x dx. Okay. Now what about the integral over c3? Well, you might think that the integral over c3 of p dx by the same calculation 
would be the integral from a to b of p of x g2 of x dx. So that's right, except for one small mistake, which is that now c3 is oriented to the left. So if I parameterize the curve like this, this is going to the right. Okay, so this is the integral you get if you parameterize c3 going to the right. But since we actually want it to go to the left, we have to multiply by minus sign to get the in. So this is minus sign comes to the fact that the orientation is going to the left. Now what about the integral over c2 of pdx? Well, this is actually zero because x doesn't change. Okay, so when you evaluate this integral, you choose a parameterization and you multiply by x prime of t, but x is going to be a constant equal to b. So this is zero. And likewise, the integral over c4 of p dx equals zero. Okay, so adding this all together on the next page, we get that the integral over c of p dx is the integral as x goes from a to b of g1 of, um, sorry, of p of x comma g1 of x minus p of x comma g2 of x dx. Okay, now what about the other side of Green's theorem, the other side is the double integral over r of minus dp dy times dA. Okay, and how are we going to evaluate that? So let me draw our region again. So x is going from a to b. This is y equals g1 of x. This is y equals g2 of x x equals a, this x equals b, okay? So we can, since this is a type 1 region, we can integrate over y first. So this is the integral as x goes from a to b, and the integral as y goes from g1 of x to g2 of x of minus dp dy of xy dy dx. Okay, now look at this inner integral here. So here x is a constant, okay? So dp dy is the derivative. If you think of x as a constant, well, let's just, let's just write this over here. Okay, so if you fix x, and you define g of x equals p of xy, then dp dy at xy is just um, dg dx, um, sorry, this is g of y. Okay, so it's now dg dy um, evaluated at y. Okay, so this is the integral of dg dy as y goes from d1 of x to d2 of x. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is minus p of x d2 of x Um, plus p of x g1 of x. We normally would be the g2 minus the g1, but there's an extra minus sign, so that's why they're switched. And look, that's exactly what we got up here. So since these are equal, we're happy. So we've proved Green's theorem in the special case when q is equal to 0 and r is type 1. Step two is you do the special case where p equals zero and r is a type two region. So this is a very similar calculation and if you want some practice, you can try doing this yourself. So this is similar to step one. Okay, uh, step three is 
um, R is both type 1 and type 2. And P and Q can be anything. So I'm no longer going to assume that either of these is equal to 0. So then if we look at the integral over C of P dx plus Q dy, then this is the integral over C of P dx plus the integral over C of Q dy. Now, by step one, um, actually this one is step one. Uh, sorry, this one is step one. So by step one, this is minus the double integral over r of dp dy dA. And by step two, this one is plus the integral over r of dq dx dA. So if you're nervous about why, whether this is really going to be plus or really going to be minus, you should, you should go do step two yourself and see that it works. Okay, so then I just add these together and I get the double integral over r of dq dx minus dp dy. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we can do it when the region is really nice. And the final step is the general case. Now, the idea here is you want to cut up your region into a bunch of smaller regions, which are type 1 and type 2. So you divide R into subregions each of which is both type 1 and type 2. Actually in general maybe you can't really do that Let's suppose you can do that. So that will handle most regions. Okay. And then what you want to do is show that if the theorem holds for two smaller regions and it holds for the bigger region, you could get when you put them together. So let's see how this works. So the so let's say I have a region like this, which is cut into two halves. So this is R1 and R2. And let's denote the whole region by R. So R is R1 union R2. And then the claim is that if Green's theorem holds for the region R1 and Green's theorem holds for the region R2, then it follows that Green's theorem holds for the whole thing. Okay, so let's think about how this is work, going to work. So let's look at the boundary curves. So the boundary curve of R1 is a curve like this. I'm drawing it a little bit away from the, where it actually is so that you can see it better. So let's call this C1. And the boundary curve of C2 is going to look like this. So the boundary curve of R2 I'm calling a C2. And again, I'm draw it really is right on the boundary, but I'm not drawing it there, so you can see it better. And then the boundary curve of the whole region R is just this outside curve like this. Let's just call that C. Okay. Now, the double integral over the whole region R of um, dq dx minus dp dy dA, I can split it into the two smaller regions. So it's the double integral over R1 of dQ dx minus dP dy dA plus the double integral over R2 
of dq dx minus dp dy dA. Now, we're assuming that Green's theorem works for each of these smaller regions, so that tells me that I get the integral over C1 of PDX plus QDY plus the integral over C2 of PDX plus QDY. Now, I want to say that this is just the integral over C of PDX plus QDY, but you might be worried about this because you know, the curve C includes part of the curve C1 and part of the curve C2, but then C1 and C2 both have these additional parts which go along the boundary between R1 and R2. So you might worry that this is going to have additional terms in it which do not appear um, in just the integral over C. But look, the, the important point here is that this segment here, it appears in both C1 and C2, but C1 and C2 go along the segment in opposite directions. Okay, so C1 is going so that the region R1 is on the left, and that means the region R2 is on the right. While C2 is going so that the region R2 is on the left, which means that the region R1 is on the right. So in the so the integral over C1 and the integral over C2 both have integrals over the segment, but those two integrals over the segment use the opposite orientation. And so those two terms have opposite sign and they cancel. So we really do get the integral over C of PDX plus QDY. So this is because the integrals along the dividing curve cancel out. So in general, if you have some big complicated region, if you cut it into smaller regions, and if you know the Green's theorem is true for the smaller regions, then it has to be true for the bigger regions, because you just add up the integrals over all the smaller regions, and then the boundary curves where they, where two of the small regions, subregions meet, the integrals over the boundary curves cancel out, and so you just get the integral over the boundary of the whole big region. Okay, so that's the basic idea of why Green's theorem is true.